Web developers use build tools to help them take care of processing and bundling code. Beat is an opinionated platform that helps you build your projects quicker. Now let's build a simple project to see what it can do for you and how things work. Let's go ahead and get a project started. I'm gonna start by switching over to the desktop and then I'm going to issue the npm init and vit latest as the target. Here, it'll ask you a bunch of questions about the type of project that you want. So I'm gonna rename this vit. And then you can choose a framework. I'm going to choose vanilla, which is regular JavaScript. Now here you have the option of choosing normal JavaScript or JavaScript with TypeScript. I'm going to go for regular vanilla JavaScript. And that's all there is to the setup. It scaffolds the project for you, places it where you specify, and it shows you the commands you need to run this project. Let's open this up in VS Code. We'll look at the files that it created for us. You can see that there's a git ignore file, so it's gonna assume that you're using git in this project and it has some basic defaults right here. The package.json is pretty minimal with one dependency and some scripts. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate it when build tools install way too much junk that I don't really need. So, so far, I like the decisions that Vit is making for me. Let's take a look at our index.html file. This is the entry point for our application. It's also going to resolve references to scripts, and that means even inline scripts, as long as they have the type of module. Plus, it's gonna take a look at any CSS code in here and resolve it as well. There's no need for special placeholders, and it also supports multiple HTML pages as entry points. Before we take a look at the CSS, keep in mind that there's no actual link to the CSS file from this page. There's nothing too interesting about the CSS file except that it's actually coming from our JavaScript. Let's take a look at that file. And that's where the CSS is coming from. Other than that, it's just targeting our ID and then loading some HTML into it. I know this import statement and the CSS wasn't particularly interesting, but Vid gives you a lot of advanced CSS features. For example, you can use post CSS import statements and it takes care of prefixing things if necessary. It also rebases all the links inside the CSS for you. You can even use CSS modules and treat your CSS like a JavaScript object. It has built-in support for SAS, LESS, and Stylus out of the box. So that import statement is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Let's try doing something really useful with this. I'm gonna start off by opening up my terminal and typing in the npm install, as well as the npm run dev to get this thing going. This will open up a live preview in your browser. I'm going to add a couple of files to my folder. One of them will be a small markdown document, and then another one is going to be some data for me to load. The markdown file is pretty simple, just a headline with some copy. And then the data.json has an object. Each object has a name, a description, and a list of items. One of the cool features of Git is that you can easily import data into your JavaScript. To do that, I'm going to install something called markdown it. I'm gonna open up a new terminal. Let's make this window a little bit bigger and I'm going to do an npm install markdown it and I'll do the save option. This is gonna let me process text into markdown directly in my application. Now we can import the library into our main.js file. Importing items is one of the ways that Vit excels. You can import not just modules, but also data as well. We'll import our copy from our file. We'll add a question mark with a value of raw to import this as text into our copy variable. Now we can replace this code and use markdown it to render our copy. One of the places where vid excels is importing other JavaScript modules. It uses something called HMR, which is hot module reloading. It means that to speed up development, modules are updated individually without having to reload other modules. Let's go ahead and create another module. We'll go ahead and import our data file from the data.json file that we added earlier. To create a module, we'll export a function as a default for this module. And we'll go through each of the elements in our data.json file. And we'll feed all the data into this variable that we created called menu. Here, I'm gonna use a template literal since my project is already using Markdown, I'll go ahead and add the items from the file as Markdown elements. And I'll bring the category name here, as well as the category description.
then we'll return the menu object. Now let's go back into main.js and we'll import this submodule and then we'll import it also as a template literal. Now you do have to be really careful with the formatting. Let's go back into menu.js and I'll need to get rid of this extra space. And you can't tell what's happening, but it's actually live reloading just the portion of the module that I updated. This time we'll add this as a headline level three. And then we'll add the title. as well as the description here. And we'll do the price. And I'll go ahead and use Markdown to bold the price. Again, this is Markdown, so I'm gonna to need to add an extra carriage return. And I'll add a horizontal rule here between items. If I want to, I can install a version of Bootstrap. And since I have post CSS, I can just get rid of this and issue an import command for Bootstrap. Now you can see the Bootstrap is loading. And it looks like it's being a little bit picky with my markdown, so I'll go ahead and fix that.